had something silly I was gonna call Brandon in the introduction and I forgot. God. Handsome. Yeah, that's that's pretty no, silly. That's not silly. That's not silly at all. It's too real. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ready? Yeah. Oh, are you starting? All right, what are we doing? That's not you, me starting. You, no, you, you go asked, ahead. You, no, no, no. You asked me if I was ready. <laughs> no, no. You do the intro. Take us in. Take us in. Remember? Take us in. Take us in. Welcome back to day, what is this, three? Uh, spoiler season for Everfest. We got some juicy ones today. <laughs> be ready. Hey, hang on to your chairs. It's going to be exciting. There's some good ones. Yeah. Well, we not this one. one? <laughs> no. Oh, am I reading them too? <laughs> All right. You got it. We got you another go generic, generic item. Yet again, they love to give us these. This has got to be, what, nine? Eight or nine, somewhere in there? A lot. Amulet of Ablation. Zero cost. Has go again. Instant. Destroy this amulet. Until end of turn, target attack action card gains that this will be put into a graveyard. Instead, put it on the bottom of its owner's deck. Activate this only if a card is entered a graveyard this turn. Uh, you already know where I'm going with this. <laughs> the items so far are just not good. Uh, as far as all of the items we've seen, this is the best one up through the last couple of days. We have more to come here today. Maybe some of those will be better. This is better than all of those other ones, I think. It actually has some use. It, you know, people play Remembrance. Yeah. So... Yeah. This could have play uses. It's not great. It's not good, but it has play uses. And as recursion gets more useful, it's gonna be better. Is there anything Levia wants to put in the graveyard? Because this lets you hit that too. When they swing with it, you can target their attack action, put it on the bottom of their deck. Um, pretty fringe case, but I don't know. It's an option. Hmm. Graveyard instead, put it on. I mean, mm. it's only attack. Ghostly yeah, visit. I, yeah, you hit their ghostly visits, I guess. But <clears throat> I was gonna say how how from beyond, but it doesn't matter which one it's in. Mm. Yeah, not a great yeah. card overall. It could have some use, and you know, I mean, if you had this on the field as Bravo, and you were able to do something, play something to go to the graveyard. And then Crippling Crush and activate this on Crippling Crush. That's some value. Mm -hmm. But the likelihood Bravo can do that is not great, I don't think. Bravo has the largest card pool in the game. I don't I just don't think you ever fit this into one of those. Especially cards. new exactly. Bravo. Yeah, new Bravo. Yeah, I <laughs> but like that's that's something. Being able to recur like a crippling crush with it would be its strength. Mm -hmm. I feel like we or might be missing something with the with the targeting rules here, let's see. Until end of turn, target attack action card gains if this will be put in a graveyard instead put on the bottom of the owner's deck. Yeah, there's like some weird shenanigans. Like you said, you can target the opponent's stuff. And like, I don't think it's quite obvious. Oh, wait. What... You could block with something. And put it on the bottom of your deck. Oh, that's yeah, true. I mean, it's, it's an insure. It, like, I mean... The thing that comes to mind the most is like an insurance policy for saving a card you don't want to like lose in the long run. So like oh. I play, let's say I play Prism, I block with Herald. Of, I'm I have to block with Herald of Air Edition, and I go no, that's going to the bottom instead. Uh, yeah. like, but games just don't go long enough. The right now in the current the current way the game is played, like we're not worried about recurring important cards, and like like you yeah. said, Remembrance exists, and that does three. Yeah. So this playing this needs to be better than recycling three important action cards, and it's even wider than you know an, an attack action. Yeah, I know you're pretty excited for fractal replication. Do you do we know if that only copies the base text on the card, or does it get all the text? Because if you get to stack your phantasmoclasm and your three fractals, and you pop this on your phantasmoclasm, all four of them get to go bottom. If it, if it gets to keep all the text that's been given to it. And then you get to do it all again later for another 36. If the 36 earlier didn't kill. Wait, what do you mean? Well, you put all okay, your... So you, this, you would swing Phantasmoclasm, Phantasma. pop this on Phantasmoclasm, it gets this ability, oh. and then if the fractals copy all the text, they would also all go bottom. So you'd have nine more, four more Phantasmoclasms coming later in the game. 
all perfectly pitched act too. It all really <laughs> depends. On, oh. I don't know why. Uh, it, it all yet. really depends on if, uh, like in Magic, where you Xerox the Xerox the cards. Yeah. So depending on how Fractal works, I mean, that's one situation where this is okay. That is a pretty, pretty big yeah. setup turn. I, and but you also have to go I, late. I don't think that the the card works that way. According to what Ryan's been posting, it for some reason has an exception to the rule to view the added card type but it doesn't like it doesn't copy pummel and pummel says uh, it gives it if it i i actually actually don't know how pummel exactly reads but it was sounding like it only looks at base text unless for some reason you're considering phantasmify because phantasmify like added a new type and they just kind of decided that that was going to work but nothing else was going to work mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's going to need some clarification yeah. but yeah like that's like a lot of setup and Putting it at the bottom and playing this card, and it just sounds just yeah. really, really bad. I, I think I give the card a three because it's not useless, but it's not efficient. I'll give it a two and a half. I'll give it a whole half a point more than the other cards, the other items we've seen. Round that down to two. You want two or you want three? <laughs> two. Okay, I'm at a two. It's not a, it's not a three. <laughs> I'm at a two because it does have some weird potential, but like we can't really see it right now. Um, it's it's got interesting text. Um, next card. Crown of reflection. Is this uh, the actual art? Uh, this <laughs> looks uh, unfamiliar. This is the alt art. Nice. No, no, no. This is the printed art. Oh, okay. See. see? <laughs> it actually is wow <laughs> okay uh crown of reflection instant destroy crown of reflection destroy target illusionist aura you control if you do you may put an illusionist aura from your hand into the arena with cost less than or equal to the aura destroyed this way activate crown of reflection only during your action phase and it has arcane barrier one blocks for zero yeah. illusionist equipment i think I think the big use case I see is what you mentioned earlier, sneaking in a uh, what a merciful retribution, yeah, to get lethal. Well, so yeah, there's a couple of like really fringe uses with this. First of all, it's good in your deck list as arcane barrier. Like right now, we're running arcane barrier gloves to um, when when we want it in those matchups, and so we take out our um, mittens, whatever the hell they dream weavers. Yeah, which is like. Dreamweavers is always a good card to have because it's just that, like, guaranteed my opponent needs to respect and fully block whatever, you know, my Herald of Erudition or my uh, Phantasmoclasm or whatever. Um, so this is a nice, if you need that Arcane Barrier 1 and you're not in, like, you're cool with sacrificing the crown. But you also kind of need to be on an aura plan to make any kind of use of this or at least have the auras in your list. Like, Merciful would be good. Um yeah, the the like potential lethal scenario you mentioned is like you attack them, they full block, they go down, they're at like one and they can't pitch for arcane barrier and you pop your crown and like pop your own aura if you have merciful out and it pings them with arcane. You're like it is technically like a little bit of reach in that scenario, but that's I what I mostly want to use this for is like I have merciful retribution out. My opponent is ignoring it because it's not doing. They know it's a trap, right? Merciful's a like, merciful's like a good bait aura because if they destroy it and you have tome ready to go, they activate it and you get to pitch a blue and draw three cards. You get plus one cards. Um, so like some people will just ignore merciful retribution if you if it's not out there with a bunch of other auras. Like if you're kind of on a mid range plan and you just kind of have a couple auras. Um, Merciful can just sit on the field and you can use this to pop it and turn on Vestige and then make some big tome play without having to like pitch and put a card in soul and draw a random card off the top. So like it, it has some fringe uses, but I don't, I don't see the obvious play with it really. I was also thinking like if you have like an ode to wrath down, how much does ode wrath cost? It's four, two, right? They're all, they're all yeah. four. Arclight yeah. is they're all so four have- Arclight. If you have an Ode to Wrath and a bunch of special shields, you know, six, seven, eight ship extra shields, let's say, um, at this point, you're probably just won the game already anyway. Um, and they throw a big attack at you, and they're like at eight, and they throw an attack at you for eight. You pop this, 
to to get rid of your Ode to Wrath and put a Merciful Retribution down. It was yeah. during you your know, action like, phase. Oh yeah, yeah, you can't do it on. Oh, turn. it's during your. Oh, yeah, okay. you can't. Yeah. You can't even. So only during your own turn can you even activate this. But yeah. the opposite. So realistically, si- yeah, you could do it. Say they don't want to block with something, you could throw in an Ode to Wrath, or if they try to pop a Phantasm with a six, and you have one card in hand, and it's a Parable of Humility, you can throw that out, save your Phantasm. They're pretty, pretty niche fringe scenarios, but there's a couple. The more I think powerful. Running it for the barrier. The more powerful scenario I envision is like you have Merciful out or you have Parable out, which is more likely to be ignored for a long period of time. And you, you kind of start making a few tokens and then you draw Ode to Wrath and you go, man, it would be so much more powerful if Ode to Wrath was on the board rather than that. So you like swap, you, you like destroy Parable and put Ode to Wrath down. And now you're, or now all your pings are super threatening. And like, I know you, it seems like it'd be better just to like pitch your cards and play Ode to Wrath to the board for that play because now you have two auras and a bunch of tokens. But like maybe you want to, you do the one for one swap and then you can like pitch and swing a herald as well or maybe two heralds if you've got something in arsenal and that's like a way more powerful turn. I don't know. Yeah. It It's going to require, it, I don't think it sets, currently it doesn't make it, any obvious like game changing plays it's like it's got some fringe use cases and the arcane barrier is nice it's not it's not an insane card yeah so, i'd say it's a it's a decent card and it's going to be played but not great you think yeah, i give it a i give it like a 7 Damn. i think moving forward this card gets better and better yeah and, and also I- just equipment that is just you know, it has a barrier on it. It's just good. It's just good to have in the sideboard. It costs one slot. I Every think we're going to see... I think it. we're going to see an Illusionist Aura printed in this set. I think mm-hmm. we're going to see a new one. A base Illusionist Aura, not a light light one. Um, and maybe it has direct synergy with this. I don't know. But I'm, I'm at, like... At, at my current view of the game... Yeah, I'm at like five or six because just because it's like it like has mild upsides, but it is upsides. But like, is it better than than uh, the crown we're currently using? Uh, I don't know. Halo. Yeah, Halo. Yeah, I give it a five. Yeah, I'm, I think I'll agree with five. Five with a lot of potential to be um, a lot better yeah. because it does aura stuff, and auras are insane. Ooh. Dissolution Sphere. All right, Mitch, why don't you read that one off for us? Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dissolution Sphere. Two cost, yellow pitch, mechanologist, item, majestic variety. Dissolution Sphere enters the arena with a steam counter on it. At the beginning of your action phase, destroy Dissolution Sphere unless you remove a steam counter from it. So you get two turns of this at, at a base level. Um, yeah, you get you get the turn you the turn after you your opponent's turn after you played it, and then one more turn after that. Yep. Um, yeah, whenever your ho- whenever your hero would be dealt exactly one damage, prevent it. Bill. So this obviously has play against two heroes currently, one being Prism, which Dash does not need, and the other one being Viscerai, which I think Dash doesn't need either, but. If you're up against OTK Viserai and you see the 28 rune chance, you know, yeah, whatever, and you put this down, it's just delaying those rune chance because obviously you're not going to pop rune chance into this. But uh, if there's a way to get an item out at instant speed, this could <laughs> be phenomenal. Oh my god, yeah. Right? Like, they go Sonata, and then they ninth blade you, and you just pop Dissolution Sphere on the field. Okay, Rune Chance, goodbye. Um, This card has some potential to be amazing. Mm -hmm. But currently, it's just... Stall? Really? So, I I think this is a little... I think this has a different use. I think um, you could... You would play this more... Because, like... You could play it against OTK. Well, I mean, you're not going to, unless you scouted, you're not really going to know who you're going up against anyway. But it is good against Rune Chance in general. 
Yeah. And if they if you were feeling like they were about to pop OTK or you put them low and they're going to have to, this just makes it so like they can't or they just lose. But I think this is better against mid-range Viscerai. I think you're fighting him and then you throw this down somewhere in the middle, in the mid game. And like they just, they're getting, you're, you have two turns where zero rune chance are going to hit you. So like all of their effects are turned off. Um, realistically does stop eight to 12 damage. Yeah. At that I, point, they're, they're they're going to, yeah, they're going to make a lot of rune chance just through their, you know, mid range viscera pumps a lot out, especially if they hit a Mordred tide turn. And this just shuts that down. Like you're, you're basically just like you could as dash, if you play this down, you might even just start declaring no blocks because all they got is their base attacks. And like meet and greet is not going to have go again. Um, consuming volition is not going to threaten to discard a card. Um, what's the majestic blue one where if it hits or if you've dealt arcane damage, it creates more rune chance. That, dread that does dread triptych. Yeah, dread triptych. You're not worried about that at all. I mean, if it hits you, it makes one, but you're also you're still blocking rune chance. It doesn't matter. So like their turns are media are like super mediocre for the next two turns, and then you just go all out on them. So I think this is a I, really good anti mid range viscerai card. I, I think it's a good card. Like I said, if it were able to be played at instant speed, it's a busted card. It definitely, a hundred percent. That's like OTK. Still not no in a lot of matchups, gone. though. But yeah. you know, um, it also but, turns off breakpoints, which is nice, right? Yeah. If you block so, a four power attack, it turns off the extra one. Oh, it? yeah. Oh, yeah. This, this, this has way more uses than it looks yeah. like on the surface. Yeah, that's a good card. Um, I did not like it when I first saw it, but I was also working so. Yeah, I think this is a sick card for mid range slash control dash, um, because all those aggro matchups just become super easy. Like, if you wanted to run three of these, I'm not sure if you run a whole suite, but you're gonna have a lot of turns in the match where it's really easy to block out aggro stuff, and you just keep looking for your other items. But then again, you're putting another item with no block in your deck. Mm -hmm. I'm not sh not sure what you need to sacrifice to make room for this, but I think this is an insanely good anti aggro tool. Yeah. Another target for a Spark of Genius too, which is always nice. Yep. Um there is a card that gives extra steam counters. I think it's pour the mold. Is that the card? You got the page up right there. I think it's like if you boosted this turn and then you use that to put it in play, it gets an extra Yep. Yeah. With mm -hmm. cost two or less from your hand into the arena, it costs zero. Oh, that, if you have okay. boosted this turn, put a steam counter on it. So it's like kind of a perfect scenario i don't think you'd actually play this card but you can there is a way to put extra steam counters on stuff but i i don't think you would you would ever run that combo just just thoughts though um i think this is like an eight i think this this is a really really strong control card i'm gonna say seven yeah i'm thinking seven too i also think it's really strong i think finding a place for it in your deck and finding a place to play it during the game could hamper it a little bit Yep, that's but, fair. yeah. I did dissolution SP bracket here. Dreadbore. Ooh, controversial card. <sighs> Tell us why it's bad, Brandon. Uh, it's not. <laughs> it's not bad in any way. Mm? No, it does suck to go back to... Couple downsides. We'll read the card first. Dreadbore. Once per turn action, one resource. You may put an arrow card from your hand face up into an empty arsenal zone you control. So not into an empty arsenal. Into or not into. Sorry, what's the wording on? Uh, where you can't put something in. Reload. Uh, reload. Yeah. So this this respects New Horizon. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. This one works with New Horizon. If you do, it gets plus one until end of turn. Has go again. And as a static ability. All arrows you control have defense reactions, can't be played from hand this chain link. So it turns off all defense reactions for your opponent on your arrows. Um, from your, their hand. From their hand, yes. Uh, I think the card's pretty good. I think it's, it's been polarizing in our group. A lot of people are very anti against it or think it's good. I but am you said in the, the same it's thing good twice. Camp. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty. I think it's pretty good. I don't think it's incredible, but I do think you would run this in your sideboard. One of your worst matchups by far is Guardian. It's just a lot of turns where you just can't get anything through, and you just die eventually. You look at the health totals, and somehow they have more health, even though you've been sending 
you know, five, six cards a turn. They've been doing nothing. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they cripple and crush you and you die. Or they open old you and then you're out of cards and you die the next turn. So I think the card's really good. I don't think it's a card you run in many matchups, which is a lot of the cards we've seen so far from Everfest. But when you do run it, I think it's amazing. I don't think it's amazing. I disagree with it being amazing. I think I think if it has a place, if it turns out it's good enough, it's literally sideboard fodder for, for Bravo and maybe Dash and whoever else ends up running a ton of defense reactions. But I honestly, actually, I just thought like it's pretty good against Bravo or I mean against uh, Old Him because Old Him's like crowning and stuff. He's not typically putting defense reactions in Arsenal. So you might catch him with defense reactions in hand and like make it really awkward. But like you, if you're playing this in Lexi, you're giving up Voltaire. Shooting one arrow per turn is pretty bad compared to one that's like got a decent got some decent text behind it but like lexi can get around it a little bit by like flipping a lightning card if you already had an arrow in arsenal it's a little more set up but like you get a lot of value out of that i don't know how viable that is but then like you look at azalea and you kind of see the pattern of like okay this is pretty synergistic with her hero power of giving an arrow dominate and you she plays kind of more of the pump game so go tall with an arrow but if you're if we're talking about the bravo matchup if i'm bravo i'm shoving defense reactions in my arsenal as often as possible and, like, it's going to be, you're still not going to get any damage through. I'm going to block from hand and then do staunch response from Arsenal or some something like that. Um, so I'm not confident that this, like, helps the bad matchups. And it certainly doesn't help her already, like, kind of whatever matchups. Any good or even, like, you definitely don't play this over Voltaire in most situations. So I'm really, really, I really don't think it's powerful enough to fix her, her bad matchups. Yeah, I definitely think uh, you're running it in Lightning Lexi if you play it in Lexi. If you run this in Ice Lexi and you're shooting, you're probably never getting go again on your arrow from other sources. This is not a good bow to be shooting one arrow a turn. If you're shooting an arrow for five to six, but you're only shooting one per turn, you're not winning that game. But with Lightning, like you said, shooting multiple arrows with this is amazing. And also in the Guardian matchup, you're talking about playing Voltaire and you're shooting two arrows a turn. If you're just shooting two arrows a turn every turn, you are never doing damage with Voltaire. If you shoot two a turn every other turn with this, you actually do get to chip them. Uh, whether that's better or not, because now they get to set up more, might be, uh, we'll do have to figure that out. But uh, yeah, this seems really good for the Guardian matchup. I think it's not the worst bow, and that's all I'll give it. It is technically, well, it is objectively better than Redliner. I give it a four. Um, I'm at like a three. I give it a seven. Seven. All right. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is going to be an interesting one to watch play out. Real yeah. quick, how many events have you each played as a ranger in the last uh, three months? Three? Two? Two. Three months, one. I played a little bit of Lexi. Was that limited or was that constructed? I played, I played, I think oh, I did, I did one, I think I did Limited. one armory with, uh, with Lexi constructed. So I've been playing a lot. I got slaughtered by all our problems. Of Lexi. Yeah. Every time I play against <laughs> the guardian, I'm dreading it. It is impossible to get damage through. You will play seven cards a turn and then they'll swing back a hammer at you and you will take more damage than they did. Oh yeah. And, and Bill pointed out earlier, um, three of a kind turns are not good with this. Mm -hmm. Uh, and like I, we're obviously talking more towards Lexi because Azalea is still trash, and I don't think this helps her at all. Uh, it's arguable that it helps her, but you give up Death Dealer, which draws a card. That's a very good bow, but on a very bad hero. But um, like three of a kind on Lexi with this, and you're kind of just like, what am I doing with all these cards? Because she's not really running pumps. Yeah, I mean, we're talking Lightning Lexi, right? You're mostly fusing. You're not playing like. Uh, plus three plus three kind of thing so you're you're not going to really be able to use a three of a kind hand with this typically i think i don't know we'll see scores are out there we're moving on healing potion hundred wins <laughs> zero cost three attack ninja attack action uh rare Two armor. Oh, dude, ninja class cards with two armor. We're still doing that, huh? 
Um, combo, if 100 wins was the last attack this combat chain, this attack gains plus one for each other card named 100 wins you control on the combat chain. It combos off of itself. Huh. I'm reading, I'm reading yes, this sir. correctly, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so theoretically, you can get to a state where you go all three red, assuming there's a yellow and a blue, you can play out oh, all three right. red hunter wins okay, yeah, yeah. for three damage, then four, then five, and then your yellows would be two plus three, so five, then six, then seven, and then your blues would be uh, two, or no, one, and they get buffed by six, so they'd be seven, eight, nine. The, it's a dream scenario of 900 wins in a row. I need to draw them <laughs> somehow, but there's theoretically a world where you can do like 50-something damage, mm -hmm. at least 50. I didn't do the math, but... But yeah, it chains off of itself. We go to Dreamland a lot nowadays. We do. Well, you gotta look at the ceiling of it, and then you got, and then you go, okay, so that the the dream scenario is like an eight. What what is the actual scenario? <laughs> so that's the ceiling. The floor, it's a three attack go again for zero. I mean, that's a pretty that's, good floor. That's good. That's a good. Yeah. That's just damage. I mean, that's a that's a head jab. That's a red head jab. But. Instead of comboing into a bad card, you can combo into itself and it just gets better. Yeah. Yeah. Except it's a good card. It, the problem is like if you combo into like a non red one, uh, I think you want to, I think if you only have one red in your hand, you want to play a, a different one first and get so this one goes over the, the three break point. It hits, mm -hmm. it goes well, to four. if you have, assuming you're playing Katsu. You're playing the red one and then going for another red one. Oh my right? god, I forgot you could do that. Yeah, you could just pull yeah. it out. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously the potential is very high with hitting a, a bunch of these and like mask is out there. Um, I don't know. Do you think this is a, a good Benji card if you played like you could play the yellow one and then the blue one oh. and then you could throw the red one for five and they, they couldn't do anything about it? This is a great Benji card. Even if you're not I mean, I've been brewing up a Benji list just before the show started, and uh, there is a severe lack of good cards that are two damage go again. There's not very many good ones. So this card's great for Benji. Um, every once in a while, you'll just you will do the yellow into the blue into a spring tidings, draw two cards, keep going. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good, but I don't think it's crazy. I think I'm I'm at like a. I was going to I was going to put out like a scale like like 10 is like literally in every deck and one is like obviously never played kind of a meme like garbage pack filler and seven some I think seven is reasonable to be like it will be in decks but not every deck not a, a, of its decks that it can possibly be in and it's a usable card. Yeah for class cards I, uh, I put this at like a six because I think Katsu will play it. I think Benji can play it, might not play all the colors, might not play it. And then I have no idea about Ira, but I don't think Ira is going to put it in her deck every time. So but I think Katsu will. So I think it's a six, six, seven. I'll give it a six. I think I'm uh, gonna yeah, downgrade. I would give six. it a six too. Yeah. I'm downgrading to a six because if you want the full potential of this, you've got to put six to nine copies in your deck and like you're taking out already good and efficient cards to do that to reach La La Land. So it might yeah. not it might not be playable. However, you draw four hundred wins and you are stoked. However, let's say you're playing the uh, long control fatigue katsu. We have another card today that makes this card even better. Spoilers. But I'm hoping is the next one. Oh, <laughs> this one. That one. <laughs> yeah, this one. Should I? No, no, no. Far? They're in alphabetical uh, order. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's gonna be like down there. Um, all right. All right. More ninja cards coming right up. Uh, Bill, Oath of Steel. Oath of Steel. Oath of Steel, zero cost, red, pitch. Uh, warrior card. Whenever you attack with a weapon this turn, put a plus one, one counter on it. At the beginning of your end phase, remove all plus one counters for weapons you control. Go again. Defense for three. Really good in Dory. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> oh, man, so bad for Dory, but... I've been brewing uh, also a little bit of Axe's Bolton last night and this morning, and it's an efficient card. Especially for a Lumina turn. 
because that's a that's it's four damage um on the limited turn for zero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if it's zero blocks for three. For yeah. Zero blocks for three is pretty good. Pretty good baseline to start at, and then yeah, for every Lumina you're adding two more damage. So if you're having two weapons or two swings, uh, every Lumina adds two, so you go two, four, six. It can scale pretty well. I thought Obviously it added twelve big, on but... three on two Luminas. Is a Lumina oh, we're, oh, I'm, I'm talking. Sorry, I'm talking about sabers. It's like yeah, so it's six, right? Six, oh, you're talking like damage. Lumas. I was just talking counters. So you're right though. That is, it's six. If you double for lumina, lumina, for a single lumina, yes, for yeah, every lumina gives each weapon plus six with this. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think it's a good card. I think there's not a whole lot to say about it. Absolutely, do not run this in Dory. Yeah, it's so a crap. Dory's or don't run it in Dawn Blade is basic is yeah, more yeah, accurate. Yeah, don't run Dawn, Blade. Dawn Blade gains counters that you that stay permanently and obviously this specifically says remove all plus one counters from weapons you control. So yeah. if you're looking to immediately remove your win condition from the game, go ahead and play this with Dawn Blade. Um, even though it is eat, uh, eat yeah, through a few more damage. Until there's like another follow up card that's like don't remove counters from weapons this turn. Yeah. Um but yeah, um, yeah, tons of tons of potential with axes or sabers or even Raiden with just regular Lumina turns, and uh, this is a this this improves the consistency of combo Bolton, uh, combo sabers Bolton, because you only need two Luminas and this can replace a third Lumina because it will add twelve yeah. damage. You don't that get the healing effect, but them. you don't need that. You're OTKing somebody. So like a lot of, uh, a lot it's of better than Gallantry Gold. Yes, because it's going to be plus one, then pl- it'll be plus two, and then plus three, right? Yeah. Um, so, so it is better than Gallantry Gold. Yeah, and if you're hitting the the thing with Bolton is like a lot of times you combo with two Luminas, right? If you kind of just get mm-hmm. into that situation, you you have to just double and like put them in a bad spot. Well, it's, it's a good turn, but like two this Luminas just is thirty four damage. Yeah, so turn, like including your charge attack. Yeah, that's that's really good. And this this just raises the chances that you hit the god triple turn where like almost no one survives. It, I yeah. kind of hate that, but like here it is. It this is yeah. this is an enabler for that. Um, just more things to hit. I give it an 8. I think that's pretty accurate. I think it's a really good card that we'll see play. I think this card is almost on par with like Beacon of Victory. Uh, it's a little weaker. But I think Beacon of Victory is really good. Um, and it, it searches for the Lumina as well. So, but I think yeah. this is... Less versatile, uh, but lots yeah. of damage output in that deck specifically. And any any Lumina deck. So, like, huge Bolton card. Um, potentially good for Kasai as well. Probably very good for Kasai, since she's also doing okay. Saber stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I think I'd take it down one. I'd give it a seven. I think it's good, but it's not light. It's not. It hurts Dawn Blade. Um, I think it's obviously a very strong card, but whether or not there are the decks that want to play this card is to be seen. Yeah. Ready to roll. Ready to roll. This Woo, is your KO! This is your card, Bill. Ready to roll. Zero cost. Blue pitch. Always welcome. Uh, KO specialization. If you would roll one or more dice this turn. Instead, roll that many dice plus one. Ig- ignore the lowest roll. Go again. Blocks for three. <laughs> uh, so the card text actually says if you would roll one or more dice this turn, instead roll two ones. Um, so that's cool. Uh, I really like this card. It's gorgeous too. This uh, like this is Punch a that massive. Dragon worm in the face. This is such a massive consistency boost to Ko, who has been nothing but an absolute meme thus far. But now like. You only need one really good KO turn to like put your opponent in a really bad spot. I mean, you're, it's not you could OTK some if you land the Insano uh God turn with uh uh what is it the Terra Limb from Limb into some high attack and then you roll the you roll a five or a six on KO. Um, this if you if you are going for something like that. This gives you, I think, if Greg's math is correct from earlier, uh, it's like an eighty percent chance if you if you run Gambler's Gloves to hit your five or six. 
because you roll and then wait, if you would roll one or more dice. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you roll and then you roll or you roll two dice for your first trigger. And then let's say you don't hit it. You gambler's gloves and you roll two more dice. So you're rolling four times to try to hit a five or a six. The 80 percent ish sounds about right. So like you could definitely see KO running around in blitz, like somewhat consistently hitting you for 20 plus damage how whatever those numbers look like you can set up a pretty crazy turn with the uh the other new spoiler what was it called uh the other brute one high striker high roller where it's intimidate but you get two if you've rolled a four five or six oh. if you run this out and you have a couple of those in hand Ooh. uh you can actually set up a turn where you arsenal like a six attack or whatever attack you want to arsenal it's a it's a five card hand but you arsenal that attack you play this you Player, or you would have to unnoticed the attack goes first, huh? Scab skins, I guess, just to get dice rolled. And you get to roll two dice for your scab skins, too. You get to roll your scab skins, and then oh, yeah. you get a four, five, or six, you get to double high roller, and then oh. play your attack, roll two there dice. Gambler's gloves you again. You could quad intimidate. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, you can quad <laughs> intimidate and swing a, an attack for a doubled base damage. Oh, my God. In one turn. It's a five card hand, but it's an option. Also, the mandible claws in that light are gorgeous. Because he's wearing a mandible claw there. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, am I missing a combo? I don't I, <laughs> literally on the card. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is the highest res card that was out there. I actually, the, so the spoiler was terrible, but I went and found the Twitter of the people who got it and they had this like, 4k version just posted on twitter i was like why is this not the one that's floating around um yeah so it's like it sounds pretty memey but um the yeah the combination of ready to roll and high roller adds a lot of consistency to that and like you could build around the idea of just smacking someone with 20 30 damage attacks and like it'll be fun to experiment with at the very least at the very least Oh yeah, I should, we should. Uh, it is a KO card, however, so that's going to affect my score a bit. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a five. All right. But uh, I got my nice foil KO here, ready to play. I just haven't got to play him yet. I would give it higher than that. I mean, being a KO spec, I'm rating it specifically for KO, and I think for that reason, I give it like a seven. Yeah, I'm trying to rate rate it in the grand scheme of Flesh and Blood, where KO is probably one of the worst heroes. <laughs> I I think I'll agree with seven because the effect is insane. Um, roll it, just rolling all of your dice extra times, really like I mean, like you said, you could do you could play this, roll scab skins, roll your your chest thing for money. Like you you can just ensure you you hit a really good turn with playing one of these, and you get to run two of these in a in a blitz deck. Yeah. So like. You get two super super good turns probably out of out of a KO, and that's all you that's all he needs because he's doubling the, his attacks. So like yeah, I, I think seven's pretty good in in the context of KO. Um, signal jammer, zero cost blue mechanologist item, good. majestic. What? I just read the name of the card. Oh. Signal Jammer enters the arena with a steam counter on it. At the beginning of your action phase, destroy Signal Jammer unless you remove a steam counter from it. Each hero can't play more than one non-attack action card each turn. So this is just for Kano. Um, it's good in Kano. It's good in the combo it decks. Does, it general. does hurt some of the... Oh, I guess it's... Yeah, it's good against combo decks. But it doesn't like... It stops Kano from killing you at least for a second. Like, hey, calm down for a second. So because it's it, on your turn too. Does this override the fact that he his cards say play them as though they were instants? I would think so because the card is still it it's not is, taking away the fact that it's a non attack action. It is still a non attack action, which yeah, yeah I I think that's right. Yeah. So yeah, so that's a good card against Kano, and it, like Brandon's saying, so it would be good against Bolton. Because you can only play one Lumina. I mean, he's just gonna hold on to them and take the damage for you because he knows he's gonna kill you. Yeah, those scenarios are a like lot of time, though. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. So, it does buy you two turns. It's just weird to think about it in that context of like I'm gonna play this card to maybe stop the 
combo that he may or may not have. I, yeah. I don't I don't think that's good enough to to play. You know, him. honestly, if you're playing Blitz Dash, you put this in if you're against Kano, and then you just go get it because he's oh, going to try to kill the, you turn one. Start the game right. With I mean, sure, if, yeah. if you're just playing Boost Dash and Blitz. Or if so you're running you start- Data Doll, you rip this off the top, you're set for a couple turns. I'm just thinking you take this over, what do you run? Teclo Core in uh, Boost Dash for Blitz? Yeah. So you run this, you just only put this in against Kano and hope you can race him. I see that. We don't get to sideboard in Blitz. Oh, good point. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's going to be in the deck. Uh, if um, if constructed Kano gets good or constructed yeah. wizard, you might sideboard this. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's the zero too for Spark of Genius. So Genius is just a free Spark of Genius gets to go get this for free. Draw another card if you boost. Great it. target for any of the three poor the molds. Blue poor the mold gets this and gives you three turns against Kano. Yeah, it gives you a lot of turns. Not a super flexible card, I don't think, but it has it actually does have a good use case. I don't know how dash fares against Kano. Probably fine, like everybody else. I think we're seeing a lot of safety cards in this set. We're seeing a lot of stuff that's like, if this ever gets out of control, you have an option, or there is a counter. Um, So I'm hoping makes them feel more comfortable with printing just more crazy cards. Yeah. And they're like, well, we had this in place to stop it, shut it down a little bit. We'll see if that's true. Yeah, but uh, currently in the state of the game, Kano is not something uh, anybody's worried about. So. I'm ready to rate this like a three or four. I'm giving it a four. Um, it also does stop Briar from getting embodiments. It, I mean, you know, it has its use. Yeah, Runeblade, yeah, it's okay. It Runeblade, it is actually like, it's okay, but I don't know if you run it. I mean, no. we already talked about the other one being really good against Runeblade. I don't know if you're putting both of these in or either of them. Mm-hmm. The other one's definitely way better than this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I used Definitely. to play a lot of Magic, and I love a good sideboard card that just shuts things down. So I would give this a little bit higher. I'd give it a five. Okay. Yeah, I'm at a four. Next up, we have Talisman of Cremation. Oh. More, more no blocking, zero cost items. Uh, blue pitch. Yeah, just give him two block, man. <laughs> blue pitch, zero cost, generic item, rare. Go again. When you play a card from your banish zone, destroy Talisman of Cremation and name a card. Uh, banish all cards with the chosen name from each opposing hero's graveyard. Okay, so note. I think this card in the current conceptualization of Fresh and Bl- Flesh and Blood is absolute trash garbage. However, I think this card is great because we know graveyard stuff is going to happen eventually. Yeah. And this card will be very good because a lot of classes, like people think, oh, well, only Chain is really playing for Banish or Levia, but a lot of classes, the yeah. new Helm for Warriors, um, Kano, uh, Katsu, plenty of people, Katsu, plenty of people are playing for Banish. So this has usability, and if Graveyard Control gets out of out of uh, out of hand, you bring this in to deal with their big hitters. I don't think there's yep. much to say about it right now. It seems pretty yeah. bad right now. Could be good in the future. Um, I'm going to give it a two for now. Best case scenario right now is like Chain uses this to do a cheeky counterplay where he like adds a bunch of blood debt to Leviah or an opposing Chain. Like that's, I mean, and you don't really want to do that to it. You could want to do it to Chain, but really you're just giving them more, more fuel. But like Leviah specifically, you could be like, I'm taking away your ability to banish from your graveyard and giving you more blood debt, which I did in a match recently with with Invert Existence, but that's more accessible <laughs> and uh, actually does damage when you play it as well sometimes. Yeah. So, like, this this is just, like, you're really stretching to get any kind of use out of it at this moment. Yeah. yeah. I give it a two currently, but I do say I wholly believe that within in two years if we look back at this card, this card's going to be good. I, I I totally agree with that. I the again, it's another safety net card. It's like print it. I don't know why they're printing it now, <laughs> but yeah. like you got to print it sometime and <clears throat> definitely see the use for it. Vexing Quill Hand, and we continue the train of like pretty mediocre majestic equipment. Brandon, why don't you take this one? Vexing Quill Hand, action, destroy it. 
Create two enchant tokens. Go again. Arcane barrier one zero block. Not a whole lot of text. Um, yeah. I don't like it in the current format, uh, at least. Grass just seems better in most scenarios. It's a lot like the Illusionist Helm. It's another option for Arcane Barrier with upside. But I think outside of that, it just seems pretty mediocre. I think that if you're looking to play such a fast game that you can maybe Sonata, you know, turn three or whatever, in some, you could probably do that in Blitz. Only in Blitz, I think you could run this. It's just fast. Yeah, I was thinking about Blitz applications too. But then, uh, like, you're you're playing OTK, so you're playing defensive, and you're giving up three health to play this card. Yeah. Which, like, three health to... And, like, so Grasp, you you always start the game... If you're playing OTK, you're going to start the game by pitching for Grasp before it costs too much. You're going you're gonna to make one. So you lose three health and gain one rune chant by making this swap. Yeah. Like, sounds just overall bad. I... I really don't understand the logic behind printing this card. Yeah. The other side of this, um, I welcome this card greatly because if I were to be getting somebody into the game and they want to play Rune Blade, we this can get them a, probably a Vexical good. Hand for a lot cheaper than Grasp of the Arc Knight. And yeah. it, it's it's usable, it's good, it's not bad. It's just not as good as our current, you know, king of the arm slot. I like that approach. Yeah. Grasp also lets you pitch stack, which in certain matchups is just huge. Like against mm -hmm. Oldham when you're on Rune Blade, or when you're playing OTK and you want to pitch stack. This one doesn't let you do that. have that option either. Art's pretty cool. I like yeah. the art a lot. Yeah, yeah I think this um, art is just all, pretty much in every way worse than Grasp, but I do like the application of, like, it's a really cheap option that has that does something. Like, yeah, you can, you can play this in a budget deck, which is... We can't ignore that. I'm not, I'm not going to improve my rating of it, but like, as a whole, the game does need budget options, and I guess that this is that. <laughs> yeah, I'd give it like a five. It's another arcane barrier on a on a glove slot when you need it that can yeah. randomly do two damage. Yeah, I'm saying a five too. It's hard because like. It, comparison to like grasp i want to give this like a two or a one but like as a card it does have some power so yeah i think i'm, I'm gonna do like four five is right in the middle between grasp and null rune gloves which is right where i'm putting it <laughs> hey we made it winds of oh, eternity this started spoiled so no point sorry Sorry. Yep. All right. We're going. We're going back to health potion. Uh, <laughs> Winds of Eternity. Two attack. Ninja attack action. Majestic blocks for three. Combo. If hundred wins was the last attack, this combat chain. Winds of Eternity gains plus two, and when this hits, shuffle all cards named hundred wins you own on the combat chain into your deck. Yeah. Maybe we should have reviewed both of these at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking uh, earlier. Yeah, <laughs> I, I actually didn't read this one yet. Uh, that's pretty great. <laughs> it turns out that's really good. What, what did I give the other one? Because I would give this the same or higher. Uh, I give it a six. Wins. We all gave seven. it a six. Yeah, we all gave yeah. it a six. So, combo, if, this is a Majestic, so you only have these three, but they are blues and they cost zero. And if you are doing Winds of Attorney, this is a zero for four, which is good, and especially since you just attacked. 10 times with other cards. Um, you own on the combat chain into your deck. So, so what do you think? Are we playing, are we playing uh, a combo deck where we block out the whole game and we siphon our deck down to a handful of cards and then we go every turn, 100 wins into Winds of Eternity and keep cycling them back and forth? Oh! Because Katsu's already mm. really good at blocking. And right, like that's and deleting that. and deleting his own deck. If you yeah. hit with an attack and discard and search, that's true. wow, that's actually a really good idea. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, so you you block 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 discard cards when you can, and then you go every like almost every under turn wins, ish wins, wins, wins of eternity. Yeah, but also you at that point you have to not block. But then maybe you're putting out a ton of pressure and like mask yeah. is drawing you extra cards, and I don't know. It, it sounds cool. 
Yeah, triple hundred wins is three, seven, twelve, plus this is four. It's nineteen a turn that you're threatening if you do triple hundred wins into this, which is a lot. And it all goes right back into the bottom, which if you're at the end of the game is just right back into your hand. It is oh, the other ones are two blocks. We have to consider also that you only have three wins of eternity, which you could remember and yeah. then it's, it gets a little weird. But like the potential is there to kind of save these for last and then have like a consistent combo. Um, Maybe you uh, run what was the amulet earlier? Yeah, that's the, the amulet. The bottom. Oh. Maybe you start running that card with this. Is that <laughs> and then you get and then you get six copies of this? Oh my god! It's a blue that We're costs zero. It. It's a Kadachi machine. It's all We're coming doing together. It. Holy shit, dude! Oh man! Yeah, um, uh, I think it's a good card. And you only need uh, this is like not that not bad if you just played one hundred wins and then this for four. It's like mm -hmm. if you if you need to, it's not the worst attack in the world. Yeah. Um, I don't. It I'm sounds like a lot of fun. I'm not gonna give it too much. Yeah, I think I'm. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do six again. It's not super it's super evil, powerful. Yeah. It has potential. It. It sounds really yeah. fun, but it's not like. Um, it's not like leg tap level of power. Um, it's not a uh, Lord of Wind style of power where you just like obliterate your opponent, but it does ninja things and it's it's got a, a lot of potential. You think the card's obviously busted, but four damage on hit is not super likely. So I think I'll also give it a six. Oh, I didn't even realize it has to hit to shuffle 100 wins back in your deck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah four damage on hit is pretty low. Six seems it's yeah. pretty hard to get through. Just below, obviously playable. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that is the last card we have for the day. All right. All right. All right. I hear the comments. I don't. Nobody wants to hear about this card. Uh, health gain is really mediocre right now, and you have to play this to the board. It's like, would you even play this before you played Yellow Sigil of Solace? You could absolutely play this if it had go again. <laughs> I would agree with that. Go again? I would agree that in some decks you would consider playing this. Maybe I I don't under I I can't think of a reason why you'd want to save the healing for later. Yeah, because like literally, just play yellow sigil of solace. Yeah, yeah, literally, just play sig yellow sigil of yeah. solace. Sigil of solace can't be searched out by a knick knack brick or brack though. And this can. So, just saying, Cards just throwing that out there. Cards a one. It's, healing, there's nothing to talk about. Healing here. potion. It's... I want to give it less than a one because healing is so insignificant right now. And we have better cards that heal for the same. Yeah. yeah just look at Australian Nets. Hayden Dale didn't carry us at 53. He killed him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if he had had three healing potions, though, he might have lived an extra turn. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh gosh, what are you doing? Oh, Just great. stop. Just send us off. <laughs> okay, we're out. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more Everfest spoilers tomorrow. I'm gonna be Hokage one day. Subscribe.